Hi, I'm Dustin Harder, and this is The Vegan Roadie. Over the next two episodes, we'll be exploring the region of Campania. Everything from Naples to Cilento, everything in between. I'll get a first-hand look at some of the tourist hotspots, but also some hidden gems. And I'm not just exploring food. These are the ancient ruins of Herculaneum. A Roman town destroyed by Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Though it is one of the few ancient cities to remain intact, thanks to the first pyroclastic surge that was created by a mixture of hot ash and gases. Pyroclastic. Pyroclastic surge. You go right on ahead and look that up. I know I had to. Long story short, this mixture of gas and hot ash washed over the city, preserving many buildings and structures. What's that? Science and history, you say? But I'm with the food. Focaccia, pasta, fagioli, and gelato are calling my name. I'm the vegan roadie, and I have one mission, to keep it vegano while on the go. We're just getting a touch of Naples today, and then we're moving on to Sorrento. Naples is the capital of the Campania region, and also the third largest city in Italy behind Milan and Rome. It's a heavily populated tourist destination, making food an easy find. Also making food an easy find? Apps like Happy Cow. And right now, my Happy Cow app is pointing me towards Tuba Catuba, which in English translates to Tuba Catuba. I'm obsessed with the name of this place, but not just the name. Owned and operated by husband and wife team, Rosario Maria and Fabio Pasquarella. The menu is packed full of home-cooked offerings with something for everyone and local wines. Tuba Catuba offers a modest decor, featuring the nativity figurines, which are very popular in Italy including a set made especially for them, gifted by their family when they opened Tuba Catuba. After checking out the Herculeum ruins, this place is the perfect respite that isn't too touristy and offers a great price point for quality and service. I'm really excited because Rosario's going to take me back into the kitchen and show me how she puts together that pasta fagioli. Rosario started out by heating some oil, adding the garlic and letting it saute just enough to flavor the oil. She then removed the garlic. In southern Italy, garlic is used but always in moderation. Cooking it only halfway through like this and removing it allowed it to saute with the oil and flavor it just enough to complement the soup. She then added fresh Campania tomatoes, prepared beans, salt, fresh black pepper, and water. After bringing the water to a boil, Rosario added Garofalo pasta a pasta brand made right here in Naples. She let it cook with the rest of the ingredients until al dente. The pasta cooks with the water so that the starch from the pasta creates a thick soup. She added some fresh basil that was sourced locally and smelled incredible. And we had a soup that comes together simply with just a few ingredients in under 20 minutes. It was such an honor today to go inside the kitchen of Tuba Catuba. So great of Fabio and Rosario to let me in and show me how they put together that authentic Neapolitan pasta fagioli. I'm sure you've tried this soup several times. I know I've had several versions in my lifetime, but never have I had an authentic pasta fagioli. I'm so excited. So let's give it a shot here. I've never had it like this. This is amazing. So many flavors, they all come together. It's just delicious. Tuba Katuba actually does translate into something. It is the dance that is done to the musical composition of the Tarantella. The dance involves a spider bite and some sultry moves. I couldn't get anyone to show me the dance, so I finished up my soup and I was on my way. Taking a hop, skip, and a jump, we are now in Sorrento. Let's start things off the way any tourist might, in the center of Town Square. Fano Bar is a hot spot for tourists and locals alike. Not only because of their expansive menu that has something for everyone, more so because of their prime position in the main square that allows patrons to enjoy a meal while they sit back and observe the hustle and bustle around them. 
the restaurant at Fano Bar is lively and even has a discotheque attached that comes to life on the weekends. The menu at this place is really fantastic for anyone in your group, so mark it off as having something for everyone. Even the kids have a lot to choose from at this place. They had plenty of the traditional pizza and pasta options, but I was still searching beyond that. I opted for the avocado salad, tossed together with an array of mixed vegetables, chickpeas, and sprouts. My waiter suggested I try the farro salad as well, featuring farro, mixed vegetables, and tofu. It was a simple offering and seasoned just right. Vegan options, fast and friendly service, reliable prices, and you get a complimentary shot of lemoncello with the purchase of any lunch or dinner entree, making this the perfect go-to stop for any weary traveler. But let's say you want to kick it up a notch. You're staying at a nice hotel and you have a babysitter for the night. There's a fine dining option here in Sorrento with a beautiful prefix menu that changes every three months. L'Antica Trattoria is classical and beautiful, featuring eclectic plates for everyone. You can find their vegan prefix menu for lunch and dinner online in English to decide whether or not it tickles your fancy before you spend the dough on a night out. On my visit, the prefix menu consisted of champota. Slow roasted vegetables, similar to a ratatouille, served with three creams, carrot, zucchini, and red pepper. They complement the dish nicely. Focaccia piled high with a generous amount of grilled zucchini and eggplants, cherry tomatoes, garlic, and basil. No meal is complete in Italy without a nice glass of wine and L'Antica Trattoria has a wonderful selection to choose from. And for the third course, Risotto Arlecchino. This risotto has the perfect texture and is deliciously creamy, served with mixed seasonal vegetables. And finally, the dessert. An incredible vanilla oat pudding served in a pool of chocolate sauce topped with fresh red raspberries. My taste buds are singing. In the heart of Sorrento, you can't go wrong with Lantica Trattoria. And if the price point gets you, remember, sometimes you have to treat yourself. You deserve it. Now, I want to talk about gelato. Gelato is an Italian ice cream made with a base of milk, cream, and sugar, and flavored with fruit and nut purees, among other offerings. Gelato typically contains less air and more flavoring than other frozen desserts, giving it a density and richness that distinguishes it from other ice creams. Gelato means frozen in Italian, and here in Sorrento there are several places with gelatos made from a soy or coconut milk base, taking the place of traditional milks and creams. And what does that mean? There's too many places for me to choose from, but I'm going to take advantage of that. Welcome to the first ever Vegan Rodi Gelato Crawl. I'm at the Antica Gelateria Sorrentina, and this is the citrus gelato with lemon, mandarin, and orange. Mmm, fragola. Fresco, gelato, and smoothie. Momi Gelateria Mango. Primavera Chocolate Fondette with a vegan cone. Oh, yeah. Puro, the Neapolitan Trio, Strawberry, Chocolate, and Lemon. There you have it. You can get vegan gelato almost anywhere in Sorrento, and I just barely scratched the surface. Oh, hey you, how'd you get there? Italy, am I right? And now it's time for some education. Simona Costanzo has been offering private and public cooking classes since 2015 under the name Perba Voglio. 
She teaches class in people's homes and also in her own kitchen at her beautiful house on the coast of Sorrento. Why is it important for you to teach these classes? Uh, I do uh, vegan uh, classes uh, for uh, a lot of uh, reasons. For uh, the health, for um, ethic uh, sure. reason, and uh, for the people have uh, intolerance and can eat a lot of food. Sure, for yeah. allergies, that's yes. great. Well, grazie for teaching the yeah. classes. Gra grazie mille. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Simona works closely with families to educate both the parents and the children on healthy plant-based cooking, showcasing the one thing everyone loves, delicious food. She takes pride in presenting her students with traditional Italian offerings like her gnocchi, Sorrento style, making everything from scratch. In turn, giving her ambitious chefs in training pride in the dishes they create. Look for Pervervolio on Facebook and you can find out all there is to know about booking classes and also contact Simona if you have any questions or to set up a private or group class. But if you're not coming to Sorrento anytime soon, don't you fret. You can still get each of Simona's recipes that we featured today at veganrody.com. And now it's my turn to get in the kitchen and get cooking with the Familia. I'm here to visit Mama Tierno for Cooking with the Familia. She's tucked away in a quaint little home in the hills of Sorrento. While I've been showing you where to eat vegan on the go in Italy, it's not just about where, but also what. Many Italian foods are vegan by nature, and Mama Tierno's gonna show us just how. Mama Tierno was waiting for me to arrive, eager to share her recipe for castagnaccio with me. While this is a traditional Italian recipe, the ingredients vary depending on what town you're from. Mama Tierno is originally from the town of Valsquardo. She pulled the recipe from her handwritten recipe book that she has had for over 50 years. And the original recipe for her castagnaccio just so happens to be vegan and always has been. Made with water, cacao powder, vanilla, cinnamon, chocolate, sugar, and chestnuts. The chestnuts are local and in season. They've been boiled, skinned, and mashed. Adding all of the ingredients to a pot, we melted them until well combined, transferred to a dish, and set in the fridge until it thickened and we had a fudgy pudding-like consistency. Vegana e facile. Many people enjoy castagnaccio just like this, but she took it a step further and rolled out sheets of homemade pastry dough made of flour, white wine, sugar, and vanilla. Rolled out until very thin, creating individual raviolis that we then fried and dusted with powdered sugar. While the castagnocho holds up on its own, you can never go wrong with a fried ravioli. But the evening wasn't over. After we enjoyed our dessert first, family and friends came over to turn up the heat in the kitchen. Even though I'm vegan, I still get to enjoy Italian food, you know? Hmm. It was all hands on deck to prepare the evening's meal. A very fresh and vibrant spread, including the best tomato salad I have ever had, made with Sorrentino tomatoes and basil that I literally picked from the family's garden on the balcony. Oregano they hung and dried themselves and just a touch of salt. There was broccoli rabe with lemon and garlic, potatoes and green beans, and pepperoni agrodolce sweet and sour peppers. These are all poor dishes. All throughout history here, people ate what was in season and okay. what they found. They forged food and they made that food. Of course, there was fresh baked bread. The bread for this meal came from the nearby town of Aquara. And surrounding the plate of castagnaccio were baked white figs grown in Cilento that were stuffed with walnuts. Mangiate, mangiate. It was amazing to see all of these dishes come together with ease, and not once did anyone ever discuss veganism as a difficult way of eating. Rather, they celebrated delicious and nutritious food and even finished it off with a super sweet treat. It was an experience abundant with food made with love and compassion I'll never forget. And now you see just how easy cooking vegan can be. And to Italians, it's just doing what comes naturally. Let's go back to my Airbnb for the five ingredient challenge. <laughs> 
we're going to kick it back to the beginning of the episode with a super simple pasta fagioli. Your five ingredients are one clove of garlic, half, two and a half cups low sodium vegetable broth, one pint cherry tomatoes, half, one cup ditalini or macaroni pasta. Ditalini pasta is in the shape of a small tube. From Italian to English, it translates to small thimble. And one 15 ounce can cannellini beans, drained and rinsed. Add the broth and garlic to a large pot or skillet. Bring to a boil and then let simmer for three minutes. Add the tomatoes, beans, and pasta, and let the pasta cook according to package directions until al dente. Should be around eight to 10 minutes. Remove from the heat and with a slotted spoon, remove the garlic from the soup. Add some salt to taste. I usually add a couple hefty pinches of salt. Transfer to serving bowls and garnish with a drizzle of olive oil and a basil leaf. Get this recipe at veganrody.com and be sure to share your recreations on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, tagging me at the vegan Rody with the hashtag Kailed it! And for even more vegan roti recipes, be sure to get my new book, The Simply Vegan Cookbook, on Amazon.com and everywhere books are sold. Bon appetito! Sorrento kept me going. I'm still full from all of that gelato, but I would do it all over again. Now click subscribe and share the vegan roti channel with everyone that you can, any way that you can. Join me in the next episode as we explore more of the Campania region with the sights and bites of the Amalfi Coast. Until then, keep on cooking and remember, it's nice to be nice. Dustin Harder's shirts designed by Lois Eastland, NYC. Presented in partnership with Vegan Travel Club. I'm Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs>